up, tribe? Yesterday, Julie and I talked with you about the importance of having your own set of personal principles. And then when you have those personal principles in place, how they can serve you as a guidance system in making uh, the most optimal choices you can in regards to your lifestyle. Today, we wanted to share with you the six principles that we adhere to in regards to creating optimal health. Our eating principles are simple. Just eat real food. When you're choosing real food, ideally organic, non-GMO, uh, pasture-raised, grass-fed, grass-finished type of foods, you can't go wrong. There's always gonna be that 10% of the time where you're gonna step outside of that. But if you have that principle in place that your diet, the things that you're consuming, are primarily made up of real food, you're gonna do all right. Water. Every day, you should be drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water every day. It's that simple. Drink water. We are a species that is designed to move. That's why our principle surrounding movement is 30 minutes a day minimal of movement. It could be a walk. It could be an intense exercise regimen with the kettlebells or barbells. It might just be Tai Chi or Qigong or breathing exercises, but 30 minutes a day of some sort of movement. Ideally, recovery is going to come in the form of getting a solid quality eight hours of sleep at night. But recovery shouldn't just be limited to your sleeping time. We could also toss in there using naps, using breathing exercises, and using time to just reflect and get quiet, maybe in a meditative state, can also cultivate the energy you need to heal your body. When we make it a point to connect to our breath, we're able to be in control of our environment. All day long, we make it a point to check in with our breath. By doing so, we're able to eliminate that internal resistance that's pushing against us sometimes. So when I'm feeling anxious, frustrated, fearful, angry, I always make it a point to come back to my breath. The opposite is true as well. When I'm feeling grateful, um, elated, excited, just joyful, right? I also make it a point to come back to my breath. Because when I breathe well, everything in life flows well. Mastering your thoughts is the key to life. When I'm able to get control of my thoughts, I can start mastering myself. And if I want to master something that's existing outside of my body, be it a job or a sport or a creative uh, pursuit, it first starts with mastering myself. And the only way that you can ever know yourself is by being mindful and paying attention to your thoughts. Because there's a lot of things going on inside of your brain. And some of that stuff, some of that static, it's not yours. But by making it a point every day, all day long, to check in with your thoughts, you're able to create a level of self-awareness that provokes positive and optimal change. Without that level of self-awareness, you're just on autopilot. You're just the hamster in the wheel. Your daily practices surrounding the way that you think are an ongoing process. You're never there when it comes to your mind. As soon as you think you're there when it comes to your mind, something pops up and goes, you're not done yet. <laughs> so thinking is the most powerful tool you have. And you can use it for good and self-development and growth and change and understanding. Or you can use your thoughts to imprison you and make you a slave on a daily basis. If you're enjoying our videos, then make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to Facebook and like a line. And if you want to receive these videos and our blogs directly in your inbox, all you have to do is subscribe to our newsletter at our website, connectconditioncreate.com. I look forward to sharing some of my uh, personal stories with you tomorrow.